Hey guys, this is Sean with Griffin RC Planes. Today is a snow day. It's Thursday, the 6th of uh, January. We got a good bit of snow. All right, guys, here at uh, Griffin RC Plane headquarters, you can see it's a snow day. So therefore, I have been working on a, a video of replacing the brushless motor in my SIG Edge Trail. And it might be the most in-depth, detailed video I've done yet. So stay tuned. There's a car under here somewhere. We got about six inches of uh, snow in the past uh, 10 hours. Didn't make it into work today, so we have a good little bit of time to make a video. Uh, first, I'm gonna negotiate with my dog and see if I can get a little time here. And then second, I've got an Avian 4250 800 kV brushless motor that I got with a little bit of Christmas money it's new but it had box damage and I got it for about 25 to 30 percent of the normal retail value so that's the way to go you know these things are protected with lots of foam inside and uh, dropping the box is not going to hurt the motor at all so if you ever come across a deal like that you know jump on it if it's something that you're after this is a SIG Edstra it's a balsa plane balsa plywood ARF which stands for almost ready to fly it was my second plane I got well over a year ago. I've only flown it a handful of times and I really don't want to make it an everyday flyer just because it's so pretty and I would just hate to crash it. But the motor that's in it is the 720 kV Hobby Star and it's really battery hungry. And I'm hoping that this one right here might change that. All right. Well, what I've got in front of me is the SIG Edge Truck. And SIG is the name of a manufactured company that makes RC airplanes, similar to E-Flight, okay? SIG, S-I-G. These are balsa plywood planes. This is my second plane. I've flown it only a handful of times. I've had it for probably close to two years now. And what we're gonna do today is install this new motor. This is new with a damaged box and, and you can get a great deal on these with this foam in here even though the box got damaged it, it didn't uh, damage the motor so going step by step to help some of you guys out is what I want to do and we're going to talk about tool sizes and what screwdrivers should be used and, and everything first we'll start off with the manual to this plane and how I came to want to try this motor. We'll not talk about what's in it right now, but so far the manual suggests, <clears throat> now this is just what they've used when they tested it. You, know, you don't have to use exactly what they are recommending, but they're saying a six to 1200 watt brushless outrunner motor. You know, and it says there are many fine 600 to 1200 watt electric motors on the market that will fly the edge truck. We use the HiMax HC4220-770. And it gives the SIG part number. And the specs on that motor is what you can go by to figure out what motor you want to use. You know, now you know what works. And you don't have to be spot on. You, you know, you can go a little below or a little bit bigger or, or what have you. But the motor that they used has a case diameter of 42 millimeters and a case length of 50 millimeters. Okay, now when you hear about brushless motors, you know, they have a 3520 or a 5060 or whatever. What that is, is they're talking about the dimensions. Okay, a 4250. This brushless motor man is 42 millimeters wide by 50 millimeters in length. So, so that goes on any motor, you know, for anything, for cars, boats, or what have you. So that can give you an idea what size. You know, if, if somebody said, hey, Sean, I've, I've got a, a, a 1030 motor you can have. Well, you already know in your head that a 10 is about the size of a dime. That little motor is not going to fly this plane here. So now you can start getting an idea of what size does what. All right, let me fix this little guy here. Don't fall over on us. So 
4250, a shaft diameter of 5 millimeter, and a weight of 200 grams, and a max watt of 800, and the KV is 770 on the motor they used. The KV stands for RPMs per volt. The exact mathematical formula, I don't know. Not really concerned with it, to be honest with you. But just, just to simplify it, 770 per volt, if you're using a 3S battery, which is the 11.1 volt, you know, you can think of the 11.1 times the times 770 kV, and that gives you an idea how fast it's going to spin using that battery. And then if you use the next size up, the 4S, which is the 14.8 volt battery, then you can times the 14.8 uh, times 770 and now you can think okay it's going to spin much faster okay S spinning faster is not always is is not always you know torque or strength or what have you you know you you could have a whatever a 1000 kV but if you put that on this plane you would have the the size propeller that the 1000 kV can spin needs to be smaller so then it's, it, that wouldn't fly this plane. Um, let's think, a lot of you guys are, are familiar with like the E-Flight's V900 or, or the V1200. Those are real fast planes. Well, they'll use a, a real high KV motor, but a smaller prop. So it's going to spin much faster and fly the plane much faster. Okay, This size plane weighs about 5 to 7 pounds. So it's going to need a fairly big propeller to pull it along. Plus, you're going to need a motor that can turn that propeller. And that's where the strength comes in. You, know, you can get a 770 kV motor that, that's this big, but there's not going to be any strength behind that to turn a big propeller. And we'll talk about more about that in a minute. And then they said they also used um, uh, 60 to 80 amp speed controls, what they use, that they recommend castle and you know obviously they got something going on with the uh, high max and with castle and that's why they recommended these two products you know do, are they do they own the same company do they get kickbacks or whatever you know who knows what it is but if you automatically go and try to find what they recommend this motor is like 250 bucks this motor was like 28 dollars uh, let's back up here real quick. The motor I put that in it right now is a Hobby Star. It's a, it's a Hobby Star model number 352007. Okay, now that motor, the size is a 4250. Note down here, their motor was a 4250. The KV that I have in the motor now is a 720, and theirs was a 770. And the weight of the motor that I bought was is 205 grams, and theirs weighed about 200 grams. So that's how I can. Oh, and the five millimeter propeller shaft, and theirs had a five millimeter propeller shaft. So that's how I figured out, and how I came across buying the motor that's in it. That was the first brushless motor that I ever bought, and I googled and googled and YouTube and YouTube. And when I bought that motor, I still did not know that the 4250 is the size of the motor. I, I didn't know it. You know, and everybody starts somewhere, right? So we got a micrometer here, and I've got it zeroed out, and it's on millimeters. This is kind of a cheaper micrometer. It's not always spot on accurate. But look here, 42.47 is what it's reading. What's the... What's the width of the one that we just bought here? It is a 4250. All right. Now, the length of it, let's see where this back out. The length of this brushless motor is, it's 47 in that spot. If we went all the way to the end of the prop shaft here. It's about 65. So for us to find 50, let's see, we'll put it on 50. There, that's roughly 50. Let's see. 
So this is actually technically 48, something like that. But but there's probably not another motor that's a millimeter away from it. So they rounded it up. And and they tend to do that uh, quite often. The the motor in my FFS or my FS my FMS Beaver is they call it a 4260, but I haven't measured that. No, no, they call it a 4258, and it's actually a 4260. So rounding up happens. So the motor I can I have in it right now that we're going to take out together fits all the dimensions, the weight, and everything of what they have. So that's how I came up to get that motor. And that motor is really, really, really hungry for battery. I, I only got a two-minute flight out of it, and, and it gobbled up the battery, and then, then I changed the propeller to, to, for it to pull less amps and stuff. And uh, just another minute or two, and we're going to talk about all the, all the amp draw and all that stuff. So the motor we got now is the, is the Avian 4250-800KV. And it's got it's 42 millimeter by 50 millimeter and 800 kV and the continuous watts that it can pull is 850 and it has a burst wattage of 1480 and we'll talk about that too it says it weighs 198 with a 5 millimeter shaft and it has a voltage range of 3 to 4S, which is the 11.1 volt is the 3S, and the 14.8 volt is the 4S. And here's the weights of the planes that this motor can fly comfortably. It says a sport aircraft, you know, not 3D, not one that, you, that you're going to try to hover and you're constantly giving it full throttle and stuff. Just a sport one that you're going to just, you know, flying around and doing rolls and whatever, you just flying. This motor can fly roughly 6.5 pounds and then if you had a 3d plane which this is a 3d plane but i don't fly them 3d it says a four pound plane now, now why is it saying 6.5 pounds four pounds you know what the motor can do because flying a 3d plane you might be bouncing it up and doing this and doing that with the plane and you're constantly full throttle no throttle full throttle the motor is going to be working really hard. Well, it doesn't need to be pulling behind the motor heavier airplane than it can, you know, than the motor can withstand. So a sport plane that's just, you know, flying around, the motor can pull a heavier plane. All right. And that's where I think the motor I have in here now, even though it meets all the specs as far as the size, I don't think... I think the, the motor or the weight ratings of the plane for it would be more like a sport plane of, of 5 pounds and a 3D of like 3 pounds, something like that. We'll put this on a scale here in a little bit and figure out exactly what it weighs. And it's, it's pretty heavy, well, minus the wings. Well, we might put the wings on too in a little bit. All right, hang back. 